No. All of you got the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Now you can access the tabular column. Okay. The observe means here we are having some tabular column. So in this one, if you observe, it means here some standard potential values are there. Okay. Some standard potential values are there. So what are the standard potential values we are having means here? Once you check it out, fluorine is there. Okay. So what is the fluorine standard standard potential value means here? Plus 2.87. Okay, so if you observe means some are we are getting as a positive values. Some are we are getting as a positive values. If you go downside means here, once you check it out, somewhere we are getting as a negative values. Okay, somewhere we are getting as a negative values. And if you see downside which are having the negative values means here, metals, lithium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, lead. Until here, all these metals are having negative values. All these metals are having negative values. And if you go means, so metals are having positive charge. At the same time, non-metals. So one more also clearly we can observe means here. If you go a little bit upside means here. So non-metals are getting as here positive charge. Non-metals are getting as a positive charge. Actually, this tabular column is called as a standard reduction potential value. Okay. So what we can call means here standard reduction potential value. Sir, what you are telling that standard reduction potential, first of all, what is meant by the potential? Okay. And what is meant by the potential difference? What is meant by the potential difference and it all means here? All of you, do you have any idea about the electrolysis process? Do you have any idea about the electrolysis process, Ma? Any one of you? What is meant by the electrolysis? So electrolysis is nothing but it is the process of decomposition of the chemical substance by passing the electric current through the electrolysis process is called as a so electrolysis machine. Okay, so what is the electrolysis means decomposition of the chemical substance by passing the electric current through the electrolytic solution. Okay, through the electrolytic solution by using the electrodes is called it's an electrolysis process. Okay, so generally, I think so you had uh, studied some concept also in electrochemistry. In electrochemistry, we have electrochemical cells are there, electrolysis process also it is there. Okay, in electrolysis here, and that means we are taking as in one compartment. So in one compartment, we are taking as a two electrodes. So one is act as a cathode, another one is act as a anode. The two electrodes are, we are adding to, we are attaching to the battery. By passing the electric current, the substance is undergoes to the ionization and it forms as an ion. For example, NaCl is there. If the NaCl is undergoes to the ionization, means it forms as a Na plus ions and Cl minus ions. Okay. So we had seen some concepts. Did you remember or not? Did you remember or not, Ma? Srita. Javain, Samhita. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, so, there is an electrolysis process. So, whenever the metals here, so metals are placed in the electrolytic solution. Okay. Whenever the metals are placed in the electrolytic solution, means we'll get as a some potential energy difference we are getting for the electrolyte and electro. Okay. So, what are the potential difference? It is that that is only we can call as a electrode potential. Okay. So, that is only we can call as here electrode potential. Okay. So, here every metal it has some potential value. Okay. Every metals, every non metal also it has here some potential value. So, generally we can call as a reduction potential values. So, what we can call my here? Reduction potential value. Sir, why we are calling as a reduction potential means here, whenever they undergoes to the losing of electrons, they releases some energy. Okay. So, whenever they undergoes to the losing of electrons here, so they releases some energy. Okay. Or gaining of some energy it will be there. Okay. So, that energy only generally we can call as ionization potential. What is the ionization potential? What is the ionization potential? Ma? Some term we are using. So generally, I am talking about the terminology of the chemistry. Ionization potential we are calling here. Okay. Electron gain enthalpy also we can call as here. Ionization potential is nothing but the amount of energy is required to remove an electron from the neutral gaseous atom is called as a ionization potential. 
got it okay so like that by removal of the energy yes, by gaining up the energy so we'll get as a some potential different and one more i think here so i think so everyone uh, this may be tried if you won't try also you can try here so what means here uh, we are using some nipo batteries remote okay in remote uh, tv remote okay and so in watches also we are have using some small batteries are there small batteries actually without using the instrument how we knows whether the battery is having the power or not generally no. general question i'm asking it is so nobody you tried here but i have a, some uh, some doubt somebody they can try okay so how we can try means here actually let us consider it as a battery if you see the any nipo battery or something means here front side whenever you're going to place on the edge of the tongue so you will send some power there is a natural method <laughs> power method people are they used to try here okay whenever you place at end of that tongue means here it sends some power here so based on that one we can say the uh, some power is there in the battery okay if you place battery at edge of the tongue means if you won't find out any sense means here that we can say battery is not working battery is dead okay so there also why you are getting as some sense and not only is based on the electrical energy okay so that potentials are the every element they have a some potential okay so that is only we can call as a reduction potential so when are the loses electrons means they release some energy that is only we can call as a some electrode potential okay now in this one if you see observe clearly means here so they had given a list of the elements and they had given some values also for example fluorine is there so 2.87 okay at the same time lithium so lithium so lithium what is the value they had given here so lithium they had given as a minus 3.05 sir what is the main important point of the electrode potential value what is the main importance of this one means here we have some importance of the electrode reduction potential value sir based on the electrode reduction potential values we can explain reactivity of the element we can explain reactivity of the element the element which is having highest negative reduction potential value it act as a strong one here okay it is highly react the element which is having highest negative reduction potential value that element is highly reactive okay sir where we are studying about the reactivity and not all means here so we are studying about the displacement reaction yesterday we had seen displacement reaction actually what is meant by the displacement reaction in simple words samhita what is mean by the displacement reaction a compound undergoing both oxidation and reduction uh, element that is the redox reaction whatever you are telling that the definition is redox reaction i am asking displacement reaction i am asking displacement reaction what is meant by the displacement reaction means here highly reactive element is displaces less reactive element is called as a displacement reaction but that one yesterday i gave one example also what is the example i had given aqueous solution of the copper actually aqueous solution of the copper is in blue color so when not aqueous solution of the copper is placed in a zinc vessel slowly decolorize slowly it decolorize sir why the slowly it is going to be decolorize means here because of zinc metal is highly reactive sir how you are telling that zinc metal is highly reactive means here once you checked out my here so tabular column once you checked out what is the reduction potential value of the zinc they had given minus 0.76 how much it is that minus 0.76 okay and what is the copper reduction potential value they had given plus 0.34 okay how much they had given my here plus 0.34 what is the statement i told here the element which is having highly negative reduction potential value that it act that is highly reactive now according to that one which one is more reactive either zinc or zinc. copper zinc so the zinc can be displaces the copper ions na okay zinc can be displaces the copper ion okay so that's why so based on this tabular column we explain the reactivity of the element okay and second one so what is the second important point means here so based on this tabular column we can find out the element is 
which act as a strong oxidizing agent and which act as a strong reducing agent also. So based on this stapler column only we are going to be explaining. Okay, sir, so how we can explain based on the stapler column means here, the element which is having highly reduction potential value, highly negative reduction potential value, it act as a strong reducing agent. Okay, here in a tabular column, the element which is having highly negative reduction potential value, it act as a strong reducing agent. Okay, actually, where we are using as a reducing agent, ma? can you tell me that section, simple question? For which purpose we can use as a reducing agent? In organic chemistry also we are using, especially in organic chemistry. And what are the elements we are using as a reducing agent? Samvita, Sri Yuta, Zavai, Zavian. So KMNO4? KMNO4 is oxidizing agent. Okay. Zavian, KMNO4 is oxidizing agents. Generally, we can take as a metals as a reducing agents. What are the metals we are taking means nickel, platinum, palladium, or we can take as a strong reducing agent. They convert the alkenes into alkenes, <laughs> alkenes into alkenes. <laughs> Samita is giving some answer, ma. Samita, come on, ma. The metals in presence of hydrogen. Ah, yes, ma. So metal in presence of HCl, metal in presence of ethyl alcohol, metal. metal in presence of base. So which one means zinc metal? Zinc in presence of HCl, zinc in presence of ethanol also it act as a reducing agent. And sodium in presence of liquid ammonia also it act as a reducing agent. Palladium in presence of barium sulfate also it act as a reducing agent. Okay. And one more actually you are not getting some main point here. We have a straw. So selective reducing agents are there. What are the selective reducing agents we are having means here? Lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride. Actually lithium aluminum hydride is the good reducing agent and selective why we are using as a only for selective reactions only. So, why, sir, we cannot use as a lithium aluminum hydride for everywhere means here. Actually, lithium aluminum hydride is little bit costly, ma. Okay, lithium aluminum hydride is little bit costly, sir. So, for all the simple reactions, we can't use as a lithium aluminum hydride only, na. So, that's why, so we can't use as a lithium aluminum hydride for all the reaction. Only few reactions only we are using as a lithium aluminum hydride. And what is the second reducing agent we are using means sodium borohydride. Okay, now you can check it out here. Sir, you told that lithium is selective reducing agent. It is a good reducing agent. Why the lithium is selective reducing agent means because of once you check it out, ma, lithium is, it has a high reduction potential value. How much it is there? So minus 3.05. How much it is there? Minus 3.05. Sir, why we have to remember? Sir, you need not to remember all these values. It is not possible to buy hard all these values here. Okay. One or two values means we can remember. Okay. But in examination, they will give the reduction potential values. For example, four metals. Let us see. I had taken as a copper is a one metal. Copper I had taken. Zinc I had taken. Aluminium I had taken. Lithium I had taken. So which one, which one I had taken? Ma? Copper, zinc, aluminium and lithium. Okay, for copper I had given as a plus 0 0.34. Zinc I had given as a minus 0 0.76. Aluminium I had given as a value is minus 1.66. And lithium I had given as a minus 3.05. Okay, how the last the questions means? Write the increasing order of reducing agents. Right, the increasing order of reducing agents. Okay, increasing order means lowest to highest. Na? Lowest to highest means which one we can write as a first? Copper. Okay, after that, zinc. After that, aluminium. After that, lithium. Lithium means it act as a strong reducing agent. Sir, have you wrote means because of they had given values in the question? Sir? Ma. Sir, I have a doubt. Yeah, ma, tell me. So it's easy. Sir, it's easy. Yeah. So it's a stronger reducing agent if it loses one. Electron than two electrons, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sir. So if so, if calcium and lithium are present, which is no sorry, 
a potassium and lithium are present, which is more reducing strong reducing agent. Lithium, lithium. E even against calcium? No, sorry, not calcium, potassium. Even potassium also lithium is attacked as a strong reducing agent. Actually, in this one, they have a, less elements only. At NCRT textbook, if you check it out, means they had given the more number of elements. Okay. Actually, I don't I didn't get the list. That's why I'm showing from the online directly. In NCRT textbook, all elements they had given. Okay. So potassium also they had given, sodium also they had given, calcium also they had given. If you're having any NCRT test book, means once you check it out, they had given list of the elements. Okay, non-metals also it is there. But in this one, non-metal, they had given only fluorine. Other elements also they had given in NCRT test book. Clear? So one thing is we can explain the reactivity. And another one is we can explain the which one is it act as a strong reducing agent. And what is the third point means we can explain which one is it act as a strong oxidizing agent also. So how we can explain the which one is it act as a strong oxidizing agent means here the element which is having highest positive reduction potential value it act as here strong oxidizing agent. One question is that generally. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Chlorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So which one is it act as a strong oxidizing agent? Which one is it act as a strong oxidizing agent? Ma? Do you have any idea? In fluor fluorine, chlorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So which one is attacked as a strong oxidizing agent? Than... My FC means here chlorine is there, fluorine is there, chlorine is there. <coughs> which one is having the highest value means fluorine is having plus 2.87. So that means fluorine is attacked as a strong oxidizing agent. After that, fluorine iodine? Is, iodine is the least one. Iodine is the least one. For that one also, it is the value it is there in NCRT test. Iodine is the leading group, right? Ma? Sir, I would have to, but iodine is a good leading group, right? Leading group is different. Oxidizing iodine agent is, is different. Na? What is mean with the oxidizing agent? What is mean with the oxidizing agent? Last class we it's discussed. Oxidizing agent means the element which has a tendency to, uh, to uh, it undergoes to the reduction reaction. Is it right? Reduction is nothing but gaining of electrons only now. But iodine is not that much of tendon. Iodine is not having that much of tendency to gain the electron because of iodine is less electronegative. What is with the electronegativity? Electronegativity is nothing but the tendency of gaining of electron towards itself is called as a electronegativity. So if you compare with down the group, down the group electronegativity is going to be decreases. Across the period, electronegativity is going to be increases. Smaller the size, greater the electronegativity. Larger the size, lesser the electronegativity. Whatever you are telling that, that is correct only. Iodine is the good living group while comparing with the fluorine. But living group and at all, how you are going to be explained means based on the bond length. If you compare with the fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, iodine is having the greater the bond length. By using the less amount of energy, we can break the bond and we can remove also. But to remove the fluorine, more energy is required. Okay, because the smaller the size, lesser the distance. It has a strong intermolecular attraction forces. Now you got the clarity, Samita? Samita got it clarity? Yes, sir. Okay, that is a living group is different. Here, oxidizing agent is different, reducing agent is different. Got it? Yes. Right. Sir. So, and what is another important point means here, sir, we can explain. So, here, electrode potential values also. Okay. How much electrode potential it will be there? How we are going to come uh, for calculate the electrode potential values means by comparison value. Okay. So, by comparing this one, we are going to calculate the electrode potential values also. And galvanizing process also, we can use this one galvanizing process also we are using as a standard reduction potential process okay so based on that one we are using as a suitable element to galvanizing clear so all these are the different uses of here so standard reduction potential values one is we can explain the reactivity second one is we can explain the displacement reactions 
and third one is we can explain here which element is it act as a strong oxidizing agent and which element is it act as a strong reducing agent reducing agent and oxidizing agent okay and we can find out increasing order of the uh, reducing agent we can find out decreasing order of the oxidizing agents and reducing agents also but if you know these values means according to that one only we can find out okay but it is not required to buy at all the values in examination only they'll mention the values according to the values you have to find out the suitable answer got it so this kind of questions already you got as in electrochemistry in previous year papers also it is that this kind of questions okay until here clear still anyone you having doubt no doubt sir no doubt namma okay so then i am going to be shared another paper so yesterday i forwarded some assignment somebody they had tried my here so today i will forward the key also for that one so once you cross check that key whatever how many questions you had done correctly or not so why i am forwarding the assignment means here sir told that exam means only i am able to give five questions but assignment means at least you are going to try some 20 questions concept related questions you are going to practice okay listening of the concept is different practice is different okay so if you understand the concept of course but in je level any competitive examination mean they will give as a some analytical questions mark so whenever you practicing the more number of questions means you will solve easily okay otherwise in examination by seeing the question it look like as a new pattern for understanding only it takes so much time so that's why i am giving as a some assignments better to practice assignments so that assignments it may be help you in the examination part okay so is that clear so next i am going to start as a another chapter my here so what is another chapter i am going to be start means here so which is interlinked to redox reactions and some basic concepts of chemistry okay so what is another chapter we are going to be start means here solutions solutions okay so what is another chapter i am going to be start means here solutions clear first of all what is meant by the solution ma any one of you what is meant by the solution zavian samita j sita what is meant by the solution sir a mixture between two or more substances very good ma okay so actually solution is nothing but it is a mixture sir what is mean by the mixture means the substance which contains more than one component is called as a solutions okay so which we can call as a solution means here generally solutions are we can call as a mixture okay so here what is mean by the mixture means so the mixture which contains more than one component is called as a mixture okay again solutions are classified into two types how many types it is classified here two types so what are the two types of the solutions we are having means here one is homogeneous solutions another one is heterogeneous solutions so how many types of the solutions are there one is homogeneous solutions homo genius solutions and what is meant by the another one my here so another one is called as a heterogeneous solutions heterogeneous solutions so what is meant by the homogeneous solutions and what is meant by the heterogeneous solution means here so homogeneous solution what is the best example for the homogeneous solution means sugar plus water sugar plus water and salt plus water salt plus water 
okay so sugar plus water salt plus water is the best examples of a homogeneous solution okay and we can write as a milk plus water also milk plus water also we can write as a homogeneous solution okay sir what is going to be the homogeneous solution once we checked out in examples only we have an answer so solutions are they contain the mixture of components what are the mixture of components are there one is sugar it is there another one is water is there when the sugar is dissolved in a water first of all my question ma is sugar is exist in a solid form or liquid form or gaseous form sugar solid form solid form ma very good ma sugar is the solid and water is liquid liquid okay so when the sugar is dissolved in a water the resulting solution you will get as a solid or liquid 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 okay after forming the liquid ma here is any possibility is that to find out the sugar particles in a water no sir is any possibility is there ma no ma here okay after adding the sugar in a water if your solution is look like as a homogeneous that means here uniformly if the solution is it appears as a uniformly means here that kind of solutions are we can called as a homogeneous solution okay and what is meant by the heterogeneous solution means here in heterogeneous solution okay so here we can observe So uh, if is uh, we have a possibility to find out the different component, sir. What are the examples of the heterogeneous solution? Mean first one is sand plus water, sand plus water, and soil plus water, soil plus water, sand plus water, soil plus water, oil plus water, oil plus water. Okay, and one such a thing. If the sand particles are, if you place in a water, either it is going to be dissolved. It's not possible to dissolve, na? Okay, so we can we can observe separately sand and water also, na? Because of sand, is it undergoes the sedimentation process, and soil also it undergoes the sedimentation process here. When it undergoes the sedimentation process, means in a mixture of solution, we can observe the two layers. So whenever it is possible to find out the two different layers, means that kind of solutions are we can call as a heterogeneous solution okay and oil in water so we are having food okay so if you if you see means while having the food in the preparation of the food also they are using as a some oils is oils are they dissolve in a water ma no sir no ma okay so we can observe the oil particles are separately water particles are separate only only na then mixture of oil and water also we can call as a heterogeneous solutions are not here Okay, so oil and water is we can call as a heterogeneous solution. Okay, so here based on the number of components, so we have a different types of the solution. But in twelfth standard, so we are going to study about the binary solution. So we are going to study about here binary solution. Sir, what is meant by the binary solution? So binary means how many components are there? If the solution is containing two components the solution is containing here two components if the solution is containing two components means that kind of solutions are we can called as a binary solution okay sir binary solutions are containing two components what are the two components are there means here one is solute another one is solvent okay so one is solute it is there another one is solvent it is there in this one what is meant by the solute What is meant by the solute, ma? What is meant by the solute? So here we can give us two different definitions. So what is the uh, definition we can give means here solute based on the first of all quantity wise. First of all, we can explain based on the quantity wise. You are telling that you are preparing as a sugar solution. So in the preparation of the sugar solution, we are taking as a one tumbler of the water. In one tumbler of the water, we are placing only Three to four spoons of the sugar only. Okay, if you compare the quantity wise, so which one is more and which one is less? It is there in a sugar solution. Sir, sugar is less. Very good, ma'am. Sugar is less. Then water, water is more. Okay. Now, based on the quantity, 
the substance which is present in the less quantity that we can call as a solute. The substance which is present in a larger quantity is called as a solvent. According to that one in a sugar solution, which one is the solute and which one is the solvent? Sir, uh, sugar is solute and uh, water is solvent. Very good, Sigita. Sugar is, it becomes as a solute. Water is a solvent. Now, we got the clarity. Okay. So, based on the quantity. So, how we can define the solute means here, the substance which is present in a less quantity or lesser quantity. Lesser quantity is called as a solute. The substance which is present in more quantity, more quantity is called as a solvent. Okay, so what is the example means in sugar solution water is the solvent and sugar it becomes as a solute. Okay, sugar it becomes as a solute. Sir, what is the another definition we can give means here sugar is dissolving in the water. Is it correct? Or water is dissolving in the sugar. Which one is dissolving in the? Sugar is dissolving in water. Sugar, sugar is dissolving in the water. So according to that one, the substance which dissolves in another substance is called as a solute. Or the substance which is uniformly distributed throughout the solution is called as a solute. Now we got the clarity. The substance which dissolves in another substance is called as a solute. Okay. And what is meant by the solvent means the substance which dissolves the another substance in it is called as a solvent. Okay. The substance which dissolves the another substance in it is called as a solvent. Now you got the clarity. Still, anyone you are having doubt? Okay, no, so what is meant by the solute and what is meant by the solvent here? So based on the solute and solvent, solutions are classified into two types. Sorry, nine types. Based on the solute and solvent, solutions are solutions are classified into classified into okay nine types now. How many types are there? Nine types are there. Okay. Star, what are the nine types? So, first of all, they mainly, majorly, they classified into three types. Majorly, they classified into three types. So, what are the three types means here? Based on the solvent. Based on the solvent, they are taken as a solid solutions. Solid solutions. Okay. And liquid solutions liquid solutions okay another one is gaseous solutions gaseous solutions gases solution actually based on the solvent generally solutions are classified into three types okay based on the solute and solvent solutions are classified into nine type okay so just i'm going to see some table column okay i can't write here fully so better I'll Right now, I'm going to share the new chart here. Okay, so once you can check it out. All of you got the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so once you check it out, now. total how many types that they had given means nine types. The examples also clearly they had given. Okay, so in examination, how they're asking the questions based on this one means here, they'll give the solute and solvent. Okay. Or simply they'll give as an example. So they'll give some example and they're asking to find out the example is related to which kind of solution. 
okay for example allah is there allah is or the example of type of solution solid solid solution solid liquid solution solid gas solution none of that okay so what is the answer means here alloys are nothing but solid solid okay let us see sir so solid in this one sir all these three first three are we can call as a solid solution sir first two, three why we are calling as a first three are the solid solutions ma i think so this for different case that yeah they start the first three here they mix it together they mix it together so solvent it has to be solid okay solvent it has to be solid so first one is the example of the solid solid solution only solid solution only because of solute also solid and solvent also it solid it is there okay so what is the example for that one means alloys what is meant by the alloys ma is any example for the alloys what is the best known example for the alloys any one of bronze brass other than this one everyone we are wearing as a gold everyone we are wearing as a gold na okay gold is it contains the gold and copper whatever the gold ornament gold we are using ma so that is mixed with the copper so why they are mixing with the copper means to increase the tensile strength of the gold actually gold is having less tensile strength okay to increase the tensile strength they are mixing with the copper so ornament gold is one of the best example of the alloy and brass and bronze sir in what are the elements what are the metals present in the brass so what are the metals present in the brass means here zinc and tin and what is the metals present in the bronze zinc and copper okay so the metals zinc and copper is called as a bronze okay and zinc and tin is called as a brass and ornament gold also we can called as a alloys okay so what are the example means alloys are nothing but solid 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 solution and let's let's see ma second one they had given as a solid liquid solution okay second one is called as a solid liquid solution why we are calling as a solid liquid solution means here so solute is solid and solvent is liquid okay solute is solid and solvent is liquid means for this one we can take as a sugar solution salt solution we can take na best examples here okay and next one is solid and gas solid and gas solution so in solute is solid and gas is solvent ma here okay in solid and gas means what are the example means here sublimation okay sublimation means here iodine iodine gas iodine camphor okay so if the iodine is over, what is the sublimation first of all what is mean by the sublimation sublimation of the iodine sublimation of the camphor is the best example of solid gas solution what is mean by the sublimation that is my question just two minutes i am going to complete here make it fast uh when the substance goes from solid to gas without turning into liquid very good ma what is mean by the sublimation mean the substance which converts directly solid into gas without converting to the liquid form is called as here sublimation process okay so sublimable iodine okay sublimation of camphor is the example of the solid iodine gas solid gas example solid gas solution and second type here okay so liquid solid solutions are there so what are the liquid solid means here generally we can call as amalgams liquid and solid so did you remember the amalgam 12th is read so what is the example in the 12th means here clemens and reducing agent so what is it clemens and reducing agent zinc amalgam we are calling that means zinc plus mercury sodium amalgam sodium metal and mercury okay so amalgams are nothing but here so one is solid liquid solute is liquid it will be there and solvent is solid it is there that kind of solutions are we can call as a liquid solid solution okay next liquid 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 solution what are the examples of the liquid solution liquid liquid solutions we can take means here okay alcohol in water okay water in milk water in milk also we can take as a liquid liquid solution only okay and so non polar solvent 
benzene is dissolved in a carbon tetrachloride carbon disulfide is dissolved in a benzene okay so all these are the examples of the liquid liquid solutions okay and liquid gas solutions so in liquid gas solution so liquid is the solute and gas is the solvent sir what is the example for the liquid gas means here aerosol okay water vapor